Allah Almighty is the most merciful. He says, anyone who seeks forgiveness from sin while they are alive, breathing their well, they will be forgiven no matter what the sin is. If you seek the forgiveness of Allah, He will always forgive you. Now there is one sin that is considered the worst possible sin that man could commit according to the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. This sin is known as shirk. Shirk meaning to worship someone besides Allah or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Association of partnership with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that he will not forgive shirk under certain circumstances. It's very important to know what those circumstances are. If a person has committed shirk in their lives and they seek forgiveness from it, they will definitely be forgiven without a shadow of doubt. If you have sought true repentance after having disbelieved in Allah or associated partners with Allah, Allah says He will forgive you. He will wipe out all the bad in a flash, subhanAllah. But the only time he doesn't forgive shirk according to him is if you died and you did not repent from your sins, then he may still out of his mercy forgive all other sins besides one which he says he has chosen not to forgive. So let's get this clear. Allah forgives shirk if you seek the forgiveness from it while you're alive. And if you pass away and you have not sought forgiveness from your sins, then Allah may still forgive all other sins. But he has chosen in that situation, under those circumstances, in that condition, he has said he won't forgive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us and guide us to the straight path. And this is why everyone is searching for comfort and security. We want to be far from being afraid or being insecure. Who is most deserving of this security and this great comfort from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it the one who doesn't mind what he or she does on earth or the one who worships Allah alone and ensures that they don't do wrong thereafter? The question is asked in Surah Al-An'am, Verse number 82, Allah says, فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ أَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Which one of the two parties are more deserving of this amn, this comfort of security, if only you knew? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ those who believed and they did not contaminate that belief with zulm. Zulm includes major sin and primarily it means association of partnership with Allah. Allah says, Indeed, association of partnership with Allah is a massive zulm oppression, wrongdoing actually. In the Arabic language, linguistically, dhulm refers to placing something where it does not belong. To put something where it does not belong. So Allah says to worship and to render an act of worship to whom it does not belong or where it does not belong is a massive wrongdoing. So if you would like peace and you want comfort, Please ensure that you don't associate partners with Allah in worship. Make sure because many of us sometimes we feel we're doing a good deed, but we don't realize this is not worth what Allah would accept because in it there is association of partnership with 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people get irritated when they're reminded about shirk. And they say, why do you keep using this word? And why do you keep warning people about shirk? To be honest, that is the main thing the Prophet peace be upon him warned us all about. It is one of the main messages of this Quran. So let's not get irritated when people warn us about association of partnership with Allah. That having been said, don't become depressed if you've committed a sin when you know you're alive and you can still seek the forgiveness. The only thing is don't delay seeking the forgiveness of Allah. And once you've sought the forgiveness of Allah, don't doubt the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A very quick piece of information that many become oblivious about is that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, most of them were actually mushrikeen before they accepted Islam. They were idolaters. They were people who worshipped deities besides Allah and worshipped with Allah other deities. When they accepted Islam, their past was totally wiped out and they started with a clean slate. So Allah says the rightly guided and those who are deserving of this peace and security are the ones who believe and do not contaminate that belief with any association of partnership with Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. My brothers and sisters, many times we end up saying things to people that hurts people. As a result, they end up saying things to us that hurts us. Sometimes they had no plan to say things to us that were hurtful, but because we said something as a reaction to that, they happened to say something that creates a huge crisis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us as believers to think before we say things. Think of the reaction of your action prior to acting. It's amazing. Before you say something, before you do something, think of what will happen as a result of your deed. If it is going to be negative, stay away from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So there is a narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that actually warns a person who curses his own parents. So when he was asked, how would one curse his own parents? He said, well, you find a man cursing the parents of another man. And as a result, that man then curses the parents of the man who initially started all the cursing. So he would have cursed his own parents by by the reaction which happened as a result of his action. Subhanallah. So Allah tells us, be careful because some of you may cause the insulting of Allah or of the messenger or of the Quran or of something sacred as a result of your insults to someone who perhaps is calling out to deities besides Allah. So think about it and don't do it. You would not gain anything by cursing and insulting or swearing or mocking at those who worship deities besides Allah. You wouldn't really be inviting them towards goodness by that mockery, by that insult. Instead, you will lead them further into hatred such that they will begin to say things that are insulting to you, your faith, to Allah, to the messenger, etc. Listen to verse number 108 of Surah Al-An'am. Allah says, Don't insult those who are calling out to deities besides Allah, because as a result, they may then insult Allah without knowledge. Who would have caused it? Your insult would have prompted it. So if you want to achieve comfort in any situation, don't insult people, don't abuse them. You disagree, express that disagreement with utmost respect. Respect yourself to begin with and then respect others. If you really care for mankind and you really care for people and want them to see the truth, the truth will never be communicated to them via insult and abuse. Rather, it will be done in a very respectful manner that is convincing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide every one of us. So this is something that's very interesting. We are taught not to insult those we disagree with. And this is the highest form of disagreement. Many times you find even people of religion, they don't realize they fall into the traps of the devil, where when they want to disagree with someone, they are unable to do it except by hurling 
insults and using the most abusive words. Yet Allah is telling you those who are perpetrating the gravest crime of shirk, they are associating partners with Allah. Allah says, don't insult, don't abuse. Do you know why? It will have a reaction and that reaction may be very negative and it might be such that you will regret it. May Allah grant us good guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those who are trying to guide people towards the straight path to bring them through inshallah with that which is really, really respectful. I mean, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the killing of one's own children in Surah Al-An'am verse number 140. Allah says, قَدْ خَسِرَ الَّذِينَ قَتَلُوا أَوْلَادَهُمْ Indeed at a loss are those who have killed their own children. To put this into context, there was a time when people did not want female children. So when they had females, they would take the child and bury that child alive. They would kill the child. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We are taught that you have male or female. Be happy that Allah has blessed you with a child to begin with and thereafter a healthy child. And Alhamdulillah, even if the child may have a few challenges, consider that a gift of Allah to you. It's your means of earning paradise. Alhamdulillah. But don't ever be upset with the choice of Allah for you. Some people to this day have so much of ignorance in them, they lose their comfort and they plunge themselves into crisis simply because they're not happy that Allah's given them only girls. There's nothing wrong with that. Some are not happy that Allah's given them only boys. There's nothing wrong with that. Some are not happy that Allah's given them boys and girls. There's nothing wrong with that. Some are not happy that Allah has not bestowed them with children. There's nothing wrong with that. They are people from all these four categories and you're not the only one. May Allah bless us with what we love, but at the same time, He knows what's better for us. So Allah says, at a loss are those who have killed their children for whatever reason it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may He bless those who don't have children with children and make us pleased with the children He has granted us.